Hi, everyone. I'm glad you're here because today's episode is a doozy. Today, I have three stories that nearly shattered everyone involved as they tried to rationalize what happened to them. Just wait until you hear what you're about to hear. So if you're enjoying the channel, don't be invisible. Let us know you're out there and smash that subscribe button so we can always be together. Thanks. Now let's get into the stories. What I'm about to share with you took place in the summer of 2017. A young man went missing in Yellowstone National Park. This was not the first time this had happened, but it was different from many of the other cases in a few ways. For one thing, the missing person has yet to be found nearly 15 years later. Secondly, he was my friend. Yellowstone is a huge park, and it's easy to get lost in the wilderness. It's also easy to fall and hurt yourself, or even get attacked by a wild animal. I mean, the park is full of grizzly bears, wolves, and mountain lions. It's easy to see how someone could go missing there. But without a trace, at all, for this long, that's the scary part. Over the years, some people started suggesting that he had been killed by a wild animal. Others said he must have gotten lost and died of exposure or eaten by wildlife. But there was no evidence to support any of those stories. I mean, not even his backpack or clothing was found. And then one day, it surfaced on an online chat. Someone started posting that he might have been killed by an unidentified creature, and the chat site exploded. Apparently, there was an eyewitness that came to the authorities soon after my friend disappeared, and they said that they had been in the area the day of the disappearance. The eyewitness said that he heard a noise while hiking, one that sounded like a large animal wailing in a way that he had never heard before, and then he followed the noise to see what it was. After about a hundred yards, he rounded a bend in the trail and he saw a creature resembling a black panther, that's what he called it, up ahead of him. He could only see it from behind, so he couldn't identify the creature by its facial features. And beyond the creature, the eyewitness could see a lone male hiker, who I wholeheartedly think was my friend based on the description. The hiker was standing there and facing back at the creature. This man stated that he felt sure that the creature was striking a pose to attack the hiker. The eyewitness was too scared to approach the situation or yell out, afraid that he would become the target. And so he decided to rush back find a ranger and report what he had seen and where. But it turns out that the authorities didn't seem to believe the account, and from what he knows, they never followed up on it. He said they were polite and took notes, but they didn't seem surprised or even interested at all. The eyewitness has now also shared that he basically felt bullied into not talking about it. But after 15 years, he felt the need to share with the public what he saw. After that, additional accounts of creature encounters continued to surface online. People started posting that they too had seen a similar creature in Yellowstone. In many cases, these people described the creature as being big and hairy, with sharp claws and teeth. Most people also say that the creature is bipedal and stands about seven feet tall. They say it's covered in dark hair and has a long, protruding snout. Witnesses say that it emits a foul smell. Some describe the smell as rotting meat, and others liken it to sulfur and eggs that have gone bad. People wholeheartedly said that what they saw was definitely not a bear. They're 100% convinced that it was something else. Could it have been a Sasquatch? Some even suggested a werewolf, but there was no pattern in the sightings to help identify it and they all happened at all times of day, at all times of year. Some people say that the Yellowstone creature is just a myth, but I don't know. I'm not sure what to believe anymore. All I know is that my friend is likely still out there, somewhere in the park, in some form or another, and it looks like he's not coming back. I'm now super aware of any news about Yellowstone, and I can tell you that there have been numerous reports of creature encounters in the park. Many of them are quite strange. 
Some people believe that there are multiple creatures lurking in the park, and that the group of them, or the pack, or whatever it would be called, is what's responsible for the complete disappearances over the years. Park officials continue to deny the existence of any such creature, but they've never been able to provide a rational explanation for the disappearances either. If you think about it, that land has been there for millions of years, and the creature is just roaming around until now? It just doesn't make sense. I think they've been there much longer than us, and they're just waiting for us to leave. Or they're trying to chase us out and getting rid of those who get too close. I think they do it all so that they can get their land back. Of course, there are others who say that the creature is the result of a genetic experiment gone wrong, or that it's related to the chupacabra, but nobody knows for sure. The only thing that we know is that people have disappeared over the years, and there doesn't seem to be anything anybody can do about it. So, as for my friend, the mystery of him missing in Yellowstone has not been solved to this day and there's not a shred of evidence as to what happened to him. At least, there's nothing at all that makes sense. Honestly, I'm now starting to think that it's a mystery that may never be solved. If you're ever in Yellowstone National Park, I beg of you to be careful and stay on the trails, because you never know who might disappear next. I used to be able to approach a dog like it was nothing. You know, no second thought, no second guessing myself. Now though, now I hesitate or I just ignore them completely. It was about three years ago when this happened, maybe three and a half, time goes by so fast. I had spent the day with friends playing mud ball. That's just football in the mud and rain. American football if that helps since some people think I'm talking about soccer. Anyway, we had played all day, smashing each other into the mud, flying into puddles. It was great fun. It was starting to get dark when we were slowing down. Everyone rehydrated and hung around, shooting the breeze. One team was lording over the other. You know how it goes with guys in sports. Even friendly competitions are fuel for the fire. We can't just help ourselves at times. I had driven with my friend Jeff, and people were beginning to head out to their respective homes. We stayed a little later than most, but eventually we started to walk back to the car. The parking lot was on the other side of the park, so it was a pretty good walk back. Jeff was tossing the ball to himself as we walked, and we were just rehashing the game and all the fun that we had had. People sometimes bring their dogs too, but most of them do it during the day. The park was pretty empty by now, and we were some of the last to leave. A light rain started to fall, so we walked under the trees to try to keep it off our heads. That's when we first heard, like, a low, howling noise, and we thought that somebody's dog didn't like the rain, or was letting everybody know it. A few minutes later, we saw a dog far off to our left, which I think was West. He was big and black, with long, pointed ears. He was sitting on top of a hill, still as a stone. I thought it was kind of odd, and I told Jeff it looks like he's watching us. We laughed it off and kept walking to the car. We were almost there. I remember my teeth starting to chatter a little from being soaked. We started to get nervous when we walked through this patch of trees, and the black dog was already on the other side. He'd have to have moved pretty fast for that to happen, but he was just sitting at attention watching us walk to the parking lot. It was odd, but we really didn't think much of it. I mean, it was just a dog, right? About 10 minutes later, though, we get to the car, and the dog is there, sitting next to the driver's side door. We both stopped, dead. He didn't make a sound, didn't attempt to move out of the way. He just sat at attention by the door. Jeff and I just looked at each other, we were acting ridiculous, so we started yelling, telling it to go, normal stuff. But it just sat there, stared at us. The weirdest thing was that its eyes seemed to be a bright green. I turned to Jeff and I asked if that was right or not. I'm not a dog expert, but it sure seemed odd to me. He said he knew some dogs could have blue eyes, so he's pretty sure maybe they could have green eyes. 
This dog's eyes, though, they seemed brighter to me. I don't know. Jeff got the brilliant idea to scare it away with the football. And that's when all hell broke loose. Jeff aimed the ball at the front tire and launched it. The dog bared his teeth and lunged forward at us. We took off. I know you're not supposed to run from an animal chasing you, but we didn't really think about it. We just did it. You could hear the dog snarling and snapping at us from behind, barking, its teeth snapping together and its paws clicking on the concrete. We just kept going until we couldn't run anymore and then we pulled ourselves up into a tree. Now, there was no dog behind us. We looked all around and we didn't see a thing, but then we heard it howling again, snarling around us, around the tree that we were in, but we couldn't see it. It was darker than before, but we should have been able to see it. We didn't see anything around us move unless it was from the light breeze picking up, and then it seemed to get louder and you could hear the nails of the dog on the tree, but we couldn't see it. And then just like that, everything went silent, dead silent. There were no dog sounds, no birds, nothing. We just sat in the tree looking around, trying to spot something moving around us. The silence was terrifying. It was like it was alerting us that something was about to happen. How long were we there in the tree? I don't really know. It seemed like a long time, maybe 40 minutes, maybe an hour, just waiting, waiting for something to happen. I guess it could have been much shorter, but it seemed like forever to us. It was Jeff who got brave and finally jumped down first. I followed him, and at first we just stood by the tree, watching, waiting. That's when it came at us, rushing out of the brush at us. We took off again. I yelled to head for the parking lot. My chest was about to explode, I'd never run so fast. It hurt to even breathe and I was getting really tired. I hit the button to unlock the car on my key ring and I pulled open the driver's side door as fast as I could. I did the same to shut it behind me. Jeff did the same, but that didn't stop the dog. The dog slammed into the car, barking, snarling, drooling, jumping up and down on the door and on the hood, its nails digging into the paint. And then suddenly, it was gone, like a blink, and it disappeared. I turned and looked at Jeff. He looked at me. I started the car and took off like a bat out of hell. People tell me it was probably a stray with rabies or something, and that's why it was so aggressive. I don't know, though. There was something about that night, that dog, something else that I can't explain, at least not with the reality that I know. I'm gun-shy around dogs now, We've been back a few times to the park. Nothing like that's ever happened again. Maybe it was just a dog with rabies, but I'm not sure. I guess most people remember their first job, but I bet they don't remember it for the same reason I remember mine. In 10th grade, I started working the cash register at a local pizza place. I gradually worked my way up to making the pizzas. And then when I turned 18, they let me start making the deliveries. That was fun because I got to get out of the restaurant and explore different neighborhoods around Oxford, Mississippi. I also got to keep the tips, which came in handy after I graduated and started attending college. Truthfully, I probably would have stayed at that job until I got my degree if it hadn't been for that one experience that changed my life. As much as I try, I can't erase the memory of that night, and this is the first time that I've been able to go into detail about what I witnessed. I've told a few friends and family members that I had a frightening experience on a delivery, but I know that if I told them the full truth, they would never believe me. Over the past few weeks, though, I've done a little research online, and I found out that other people have had similar experiences so I figured this would be a safe place to share my story. It was the last delivery of the night, and the customer lived right at the edge of town. Another quarter of a mile, and he would have been out of our delivery zone. The sky was pitch black, and there wasn't any street lights. There was just a faint bulb burning on the guy's porch. And by the time I got back to my car, I couldn't see my hand in front of my face. I was happy to be back behind the wheel, and I started driving back towards the restaurant. But just a couple of minutes down the road, I heard a loud pop 
and I realized that I had run over something that punctured one of my tires. This was the first time I'd ever had a flat tire, and I didn't know the first thing about how to change it. I pulled off under the shoulder and started to panic a little bit. It was the worst place to have an emergency. I could barely see anything around me, and I was still about four miles from the restaurant. Mind you, this was right when cell phones were just starting to become popular, and I didn't have one. So instead of trying to change a tire for the first time ever in the dark, I figured my best bet would be to try to walk back towards work. Luckily, I had a flashlight in the trunk, so I could at least see a few feet in front of me as I began the journey. After a big truck nearly hit me, I decided to move away from the shoulder of the road and walk a bit deeper into the brush. There were a few trees, but nothing crazy. I figured I would just keep going in the same general direction and eventually end up at the restaurant. But a couple of minutes later, I heard some ruffling in the leaves just ahead of me. I told myself it was nothing to worry about, maybe just something falling from one of the trees. But then I heard it again, only much louder and closer. I slowly moved the beam of my flashlight up from the ground and I initially saw a pair of hind legs that looked a lot like they could have belonged to my parents' German Shepherd. At first I considered that it might be a stray dog and I was a little bit relieved. I always loved dogs. But then I kept moving the light higher and I realized that these legs were way bigger than any normal dog. This monster was walking upright and by the time a flashlight got to its head, I knew that this wasn't any animal I had ever seen before. It had to have been pushing eight feet tall. I was close to six feet, and it towered over me. Its mangy brown fur covered an enormous head, and it seemed to have a thousand teeth coming out of its long, pointed snout. Worst of all were its eyes. They seemed to glow red in the dark, and they reminded me of images that I had seen of what people think demons look like. And then I got a whiff of its stench. I don't know whether it was more like stale urine or garbage that had been sitting out in the hot sun, but it was disgusting either way. This thing then let out a vicious-sounding growl and jumped towards me. It must have moved more than a yard with one leap, and then it seemed like it was close enough to reach out, and touch. Of course, I wasn't about to try to touch it. All of this happened in just a few seconds, but it felt like the encounter lasted a lifetime. I finally got control of my senses and I took off running back towards the road. I heard the rustling leaves and a few more growls, but I didn't dare look back to see how close it was. I never ran faster than I did that night, even when I was on the high school track team. My feet didn't slow down until I got back into town and I fell down at the door of the restaurant. I was out of breath and exhausted when my manager came to check on me. She asked what was wrong, and I didn't know what to tell her. Instead of getting into the details, I just told her about the flat tire, and I said I got spooked on the way back. She was very helpful, and she even called her husband, who offered to change my tire for me. As much as I loved that job, though, I just couldn't shake the feeling that I could possibly run into that creature in the woods again. The next day, I turned in my two weeks' notice and refused to go out on any more deliveries. To this day, I still haven't been back to that side of town, and I don't think I'll be headed there anytime soon.